Hello everyone, I hope you are all well and safe. Today I want to cover in depth how to top it up a heating system, how to refill a heating system with cast iron radiators, brand new ones, on a brand new uh, refurbished project that we cannot afford any leaks. A very expensive carpet has been just uh, uh, installed, painted fresh, 12 cast iron radiators, some of them installed uh, or assembled in situ in place and we want to make sure there's no problems. I want to teach you guys and at least tell you the way I do to avoid the leaks and surprise when we do a project like this. Hopefully that helps you to understand a bit more about the best practice guys that we follow as a company. I'm, I'm Jeff, I'm from BI Heating Plumbing and we are specialized in heating plumbing solutions and I hope this video helped you. Thank you. I'm going to turn the camera to the other way around so you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So in general, on all the radiators, you've got main components which could leak during the filling up of the system. So uh, when you see a, a project, you have to top up the pressure or you have to refill the heating system. The points that could leak are the pipe work getting to the valve, the valve itself, two, three, the connection between the valve and the radiator, four, some of the radiators, because they are assembled on sides, they can leak on the joints, and five, on the bleeding points. So what we do is we do a risk assessment and check all the possibilities of a leak in the project. <sighs> so guys, what I mean with uh, risk assessment is a procedure that we do to make sure we cover all the possible risks during the installation project. And that should be used in every single procedure you do in any sort of project, I feel. Uh, on this one, for example, we divide in five areas and I gave five levels of risk. So the pipe work, let me just show you this other one here. You can come this way. <laughs> This one here, my guys are already putting some protections around everywhere. I didn't. Let me show the other one. Another thing is applying protection in each one. Which, which I believe is where the critical point is. I'm gonna talk of the history on that, of that job. I mentioned about the five risks, yeah, the five points that could have a leak here. And uh, uh, normally, connection to the pipe work, about four, uh, between zero to five is the range that I use myself. Uh, the valve to the radiator, five or four, that's a very high risk. The radiator itself, very low. I top three when it's a, a, a cast iron radiator, and these ones here, which are the bleeding points, maybe two or three. So there are points that I feel I need to watch. What we did on this project, we installed all these radiators already. They, they were all already installed and uh, filled, pressure test, when this carpet was not in position. What they gave us, they gave us the confidence that uh, uh, if something went wrong, it would fail that time. So after doing all these pre-tests that we did, now the only thing that uh, is worrying me the most is the connections. And I cannot afford to have any single drip coming from here to there. Yeah, I, as this being pressure test, we're going to test again, but from five or from four, where I told before, that drops down to one, the risk. This one I'm still thinking this could be about three. Uh, the radiator itself, this one is not assembled, but the ones that assemble site, maybe one, because they were already tested, and these ones, maybe one as well. So, in general, this is to my risky point, and I cannot afford a leak now. So the procedure that we're going to follow is, uh, first, it's something that I call uh, 
preparation and protection. Yeah, we're gonna protect everything. We're gonna shut off all these valves and I'm gonna increase the pressure of the heating system, testing the pipework up to the valve. Once that is satisfied, which I'm gonna probably crank up the pressure 2.5 bars, uh, where the limits of the heating system is about three, so 2.5 bars, it's a very high setting pressure that you can test. 2.5 bars up to here, the next point is open the valves and test the connections between the radiator and the valves. Uh, I'm not bleeding the radiators at this point, I'm just gonna put pressure in the system again. It's gonna be full of air at the top, but water will ingress inside the radiator and that's gonna give me a good indication if that section of pipe work is safe. Uh, once that is satisfied, then I move on to the start to build the radiators, I take all the air out and perform the heat test procedure where I'm going to turn on the boiler uh, and get maximum pressure, maximum temperature and you should create the worst scenario. If there is a possible leak at that time, we are here. We, we, we are around the property checking. We are in three guys today here walking around making sure everything's all right. Now, one thing that strikes me is that uh, after finishing uh, this step-by-step -step procedures, I get surprised that after well, a few days later, some of these nuts here, I'm going to record the nuts, these retaining nuts here, yeah, which are the connecting points between the radiator and the valve, they get bit loose. So I really recommend you to, if possible, allow the system to cool down and uh, do a quarter turn, tighten, uh, tighten up procedure on them, in all of them, just to be sure that everything's all right. So we're starting now. I hope you can uh, follow us and check uh, if that helps you when you're doing your own stuff. Yeah, it's in planning. And we see you soon. And we carry on here. I'm going to turn the camera to the other side. Yeah, the other thing which is important to have is tools. So during the verification process, he's putting the covers in there. But we need as well to have some containers. And those plastic uh, with this funny aperture to shapes, they are very helpful. And I've got this ones that can be extended as well. So they are useful and helpful for us to do the project like this. So, after the verification step has been done, which is checking all the valves, make sure they are all closed, making sure the bridging valves are closed, protection of all the radiators, make sure you have got the right tools around, we've got a wet hoover, we've got a, oops, by the way, I've got another wet hoover here as well, uh, uh, towels, containers and everything, and we started from our process. So, uh, you open one handle, and it's slowly, gradually, it starts to open the second one. I'm not sure if you can hear the water flowing through. Okay. And uh, the plan is that I'm going to do half a bar pressure level first. And from half a bar pressure level, which if you see here, is uh, it's just down to the bottom here. It's not much. But they're going to give me education if there's any open end or not. Right. I have one engineer in each level looking after the radiators across. Any problems they're going to call me, they're going to give me a shout. Let's see, I'm going to just do a push. I'm going to stop for a bit. Just have a word with them, make sure they are okay before I carry on. Okay. Oh, okay, guys. Okay. Brother? Oh, okay, upstairs. Okay. Starting. Let's get to. Let's see if you can see the pressure going up. 
What is coming? Coming. Half of that. Yeah, it's about half a bar here, a bit more. Now I'm gonna stop. This is the first level of test. It's just make sure there's no open ends anywhere. If there was anything opened, this pressure gauge will start to drop. So I'm gonna allow two or three minutes around here. Just gonna have a word with the guys out there before I crank up to one bar. And if that's okay, we bring it up to one and a half or two, and then the two and a half bars, which is the final uh, cold test, pressure test base set. Thank you. Okay, so during the first step, now we just quick check, make sure there's no uh, connection showing anything wet. Let me see. And, yeah, walk around, and then we carry on to the next levels of test. Uh, you can see the floor has been protected by the builder already. And one day we talk about these bathrooms and everything. <laughs> already started to crank up to one bar now. So, let's see. Yes, almost there. So the second level, one bar has has been achieved. Let's see the guys checking everywhere. Hoover's in position. All right, just checking. Everything okay? Okay. Good. Everything okay? Okay. okay. Carry on. 1.5. Now there's something interesting. The main supply pressure from the street is just 1.5 bars. Yeah. Interesting, you know, it's actually maybe gets to 1.7. Interesting uh, that uh, it's not good enough, isn't it? This property has got a boosted pump in the basement. We're gonna turn it back on so I can bring this up to where it needs to be. We come back in a second. With the pump on, Let's crank this up to where it needs to be. What a difference. And the pusher pump is on. Stop two bars. Okay. Close both valves. I'm gonna walk around now, do a proper, proper check, just be sure everything's all right. And then, we come back, because I wish I could put 2.5 bars. We're here checking connections. So far, so good. Not bad. Let's bring this up to two and a half bars now. Two point five. Happy with this. Let's check everything. Now they are performing the test 
all the valves. Yeah? So they are opening H radiator, and I'm keeping about one bar to start. So they did this one. What happened was the valves were opened. The radiator now is full of water at a certain point, and we're testing the connections here to make sure there's no leak at all on this final slot. So fine. We are doing this now. Let's carry on. Okay, after the pressure test of the valves and then the rats, now we're checking and bleeding the radiators themselves. So he's removing the air from the radiators now. Let's see if I can record from here. This is protection. So the key is that we cannot allow any drip on the floor. That's all. Let's see how careful he was. He heard that first sip of water out. Then slowly we're going to do this in each one, bleeding all of them from bottom to top. Yeah. After that, we do the heat test. Feel some. Now that we're doing the bleeding process, I tend to leave the valve partially open. That's why you can hear this uh, sound in the background. Because we try to keep the pressure set to around one bar. We don't want the, the, the procedure of bleeding it, it's splashing water as well. We want a nice consistent bleeding and we're going to go by, I'm going to turn it off for a bit. They're going to go in each radiator, bleed them without any major, major splashing or major uh, uh, pressure coming out. I right, drop down to half bar, then increase again. Partially open, slow, steady, and constant. So now we're going to fill up the system from bottom to top across all the radiators. After that, we do the heat test. So far, so good. Yeah, almost there. We're still now on the top floor. And uh, uh, very good, the house is cold. We need to get the house warm and test the heating system. This will be perfect. And uh, I can see the pressure dropping down again. i just pick it up, not much. Just put me on top of this. But in general, I think the, the key point is that's this is my way of doing this. Yeah? There are many ways of filling up the system and it depends on the circumstance, depends on the property, where you are on the project, if the floor is finished on this one, then I'm really careful. It's because we've got brand new expensive carpets, everything's completed. Cast iron radiators, which is normally very uh, uh, complicated when you have to join them on, on site, when they can, uh, we have to assemble them on site. And uh, following this step-by-step -step procedure, I take consideration. I did a pre-test before everything. It's a, it's a must for me. So that safeguards our installation, and then we can always deliver a a, a, a procedure of filling up with our leaks. That's very good. One uh, more, a bit more, and we keep informed. Of course, you cannot forget tower rails as well. This is, you've got two tower rails on this property. You've got the valves in each side. This one is a dual fuel type one with electric element as well. So it works with the heating. And then if you need in the summertime, you use the electric switch on the other side. The bleeding point of them yeah, is not so uh, exposed as the radiator. Yeah, here. Let's see if I can show you this. So. It's part of the test as well. The next step is the heat test. So we're getting the power back onto the boiler, pump running, and uh, let's start to test the system. For now, I set up just one bar because I'm just purging and venting the pump and the, and the boiler, and it's slowly gradually going to build up the pressure and the temperature. Okay. 
for now bodies working low pressure, low temperature. That just to be a, to safeguard of what we're doing now. So body's firing up, pressure just above two bars. Radiator is getting hotter and hotter. We decided to the top floor radiator. We want to use this as a as a injection point for the inhibitor. But you can see, if you can see from here, the water really, really plumy. So plumage means it's really, really uh, burning as it should be. Yeah, with a good rate of performance. Let me just see this one. So as you go around and start to touch the radiator, I start to feel heat coming through, hot. Uh, cast iron radiators they normally take longer to heat up, right? The same way they take longer to cool down. They are very interesting, very good. So my guy is here now trying to inject inhibitor on this radiator. Let's follow this procedure. Uh, I couldn't find my uh, inhibitor funnel that I keep. So we, what we've done is we've got a standard funnel with a bit of a uh, hose pipe. We're going to remove the plug, which is I can record this to you. You've got one side, the bleeding valve, the other side is just a plug. We're going to insert this into the uh, orifice and then see uh, if we can add it to that side, allow air to be pulled on that side, and that should work. Let me just turn the camera. Okay, so what we set up the funnel, the connection, the container underneath. The guy is adding a solution. What happened is this will simplify things. This right jet is still empty, the system is full, it's getting hot. We add into this point. And then once we open the valves, it will be much easier. We are adding uh, around two liters of inhibitor solution. You need about one bottle for roughly 10 radiators. Uh, there's no problem putting a bit more, uh, or you don't want to put less. So we're going to put one and a half to two liters because of about well, 12, 13 radiators, I think, in this property, and uh, that will give extra protection to the heating system. Thank you. All right, so pressure 2.5 bars, oil rises 62 degrees temperature, set to maximum. Let's keep monitoring this, and uh, uh, that's very good. Let's see. Keep Hi, right. so guys, I can say, look at this sun, this is fantastic. Uh, I can say, <laughs> uh, look, hello. Uh, what I can say to you is, but this is a piping hot, uh, we are very satisfied, we are uh, working as they should be. We're gonna leave them running from the day to day. Uh, probably the end of the day, we do a final tidying up. Just a quarter turn on the nuts, make sure they're all fine and no leaks. So as I can, as I, uh, I said to you always, we this is the way that we do the the, the filling up of a system. There are different methods. Probably uh, people doing something even better than us. But I like this step by step and. Uh, uh, I feel that that maybe helps someone that is trying to do the same. Yeah, it's in plumbing with flash problems already. Thank you.